Good evening, everyone. I want to thank the Arthritis Society for asking me to come and speak this evening on what I feel, obviously, is a very important topic, and I thank you for attending uh, as well. The it, It's particularly a pleasure for me to come because I have been coming out to Edson for the last uh, year and a half now. Uh, on a monthly basis seeing patients so to come out in the community as well and uh, provide more information on one of the more common diseases that I see uh, is uh, a pleasure. So I have 15 minutes to talk about everything there is to know about rheumatoid arthritis which really is not a lot of time but what I'd like to go over is osteoarthritis versus rheumatoid arthritis in going through the entire talk because I think there is a little bit of confusion sometimes between these two and they are very different entities. How common is rheumatoid arthritis? Is there anything that we could do to change the risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis? What are the typical symptoms? How it's diagnosed? And a very brief overview of treatment and the goals of treatment. So broadly speaking in the world today there are two types of arthritis. There's osteoarthritis, which is a wear and tear arthritis, which unfortunately we all get to some degree as we get older, whether it's symptomatic or not is a different issue. And then there's inflammatory arthritis, which is very different. Rheumatoid arthritis is the most common type of inflammatory arthritis. And while I say it is relatively common, if we compare it to other diseases, it isn't uh, as prevalent. So rheumatoid arthritis is a, occurs in approximately 1% of the population. If you compare that to osteoarthritis, it's about 10%. Diabetes is around the same. And hypertension, high blood pressure, is 1 in 5 people. Why does rheumatoid arthritis happen? Ultimately, we still don't know the answer to that question. We do know it's an autoimmune condition, meaning that the immune system decides to attack the joints. Why that is is unclear. As a general concept, we do believe there is a genetic component that makes someone more susceptible to rheumatoid arthritis. But we also know not everyone who has certain uh, genetic uh, makeup gets will get rheumatoid arthritis. So likely there is some sort of environmental trigger, be it an infection which we have yet to identify, or some other environmental component which allows for that genetic makeup to become active and cause the disease. Females, unfortunately, do get rheumatoid arthritis much more often than males. Unlike osteoarthritis, which increases with age, rheumatoid arthritis can happen at any age. Uh, most commonly in between the ages of 40 and 60, but our pediatric colleagues will see rheumatoid in six-month-old children, and you could get it for the first time in your 80s as well. A family history does increase your risk by a few times, and smoking definitely is a risk factor for developing rheumatoid arthritis, so that's one thing that we can make a big difference in uh, for all the other reasons that we should stop smoking as well. The way rheumatoid arthritis presents is also different than osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis, the more we use the joints, the worse they feel, whereas with rheumatoid arthritis, to a certain degree, they actually feel better with activity and worse with rest. With rheumatoid arthritis, the morning time is not a particularly good time, and usually the joints are described as being stiff for at least an hour in most patients, whereas osteoarthritis, there sometimes is some stiffness, but we're talking less than an hour, usually under 30 minutes. Rheumatoid arthritis, there is swelling to the joints themselves, and it's kind of a boggy feel to the swelling, and it can be very obvious, and sometimes not so much, and it really does take an expert to see if there is swelling there. Osteoarthritis, the joints aren't truly swollen. There is enlargement of the joint uh, at times, but that's bony enlargement. The joints affected in rheumatoid arthritis also are very different than osteoarthritis. In rheumatoid arthritis, as you can see with the arrow on the right side of the screen, the 
bottom of your finger, the joint right at the bottom, is very commonly affected, and that does not and will not happen in osteoarthritis. Whereas in osteoarthritis, it's the joints right at the end of the fingers, which are much more common and typically does not occur in rheumatoid arthritis. Ultimately, rheumatoid arthritis can affect any of our joints, uh, typically other than the lower back. Um, and you can see most of the joints are highlighted in this diagram here compared to osteoarthritis where more commonly we see it in kind of the hips and below um, which is why you often hear about hips and knees being replaced. The other important thing to know about rheumatoid arthritis is it is not just the disease of joints and it can affect more than just joints. Um, and really it depends on the severity of disease and how well or in the case, this case how poorly it may be treated or controlled which allows the other manifestations to develop and it really can affect anything head to toe and I've listed a number of possibilities including eyes, heart, lungs, skin, uh, the blood within the blood vessels uh, rarely but it can as well affect the kidneys how do we diagnose rheumatoid arthritis? And I know this is something which sometimes can be perplexing because there really isn't a blood test that can be done to diagnose rheumatoid. It is best diagnosed when someone comes to see me. We talk, we talk about the symptoms they're having, and then we do a complete physical examination, particularly looking at the joints, trying to detect if there is swelling or not. Like I said, blood work and x-rays only tell part of the story. Uh, I see a number of patients who have blood tests which suggest uh, they may have rheumatoid arthritis, but they don't. And I see lots of patients whose blood work is perfectly normal, but it is quite clear that they do have rheumatoid arthritis and require treatment. So that being said, there is no blood test which definitively diagnoses rheumatoid arthritis. X-rays are important uh, to help with the diagnosis as well as without well-controlled rheumatoid you can develop in some patients bone changes around the joints and that's something we want to monitor for. So in terms of rheumatoid arthritis treatment I am sure for those of you who have an interest have seen on the internet or any other resources pictures like this of hands that ultimately have been damaged uh, quite uh, significantly from rheumatoid arthritis. And our goal, and a very reasonable goal in 2010, is to prevent this from happening. So how do we do this? So at a very basic level, rehabilitation is important. Uh, strengthening of muscles, stretching, joint support uh, are all potentially important components. Education is important, so uh, events like tonight. Uh, in Edmonton we have a four-day uh, rheumatoid arthritis education program which is available to all our patients. Um, there are internet resources which are available as well. Anti-inflammatories are a good symptomatic first approach but not the be-all end-all. I've listed a number of uh, anti-inflammatories here which you may have heard of. They do, like I said, ease pain, they ease the stiffness, they hide swelling, but the important thing to know here is they do not treat the underlying disease, meaning that even if things feel a lot better, the disease is still going on and bone damage can still occur and long term we really need to prevent that bone damage from happening because once it happens at least today we still cannot fix that. Steroids in the past have been a mainstay they do work very quickly the problem with steroids is they have many side effects particularly with higher doses and longer duration so we want to avoid steroids for as, as much as possible particularly taking them through uh, through tablets. Uh, at times there is a role to inject a steroid for a particular joint that is causing trouble, um, but we really want to avoid steroids and treat with our other mainstay, which is a class of medications called DMARDs, which is, stands for Disease Modifying Antirheumatic Drug. DMARDs are used to treat the disease, the underlying disease, and by treating the disease, 
it should lead to no pain, no stiffness, no swelling, functionally uh, able to do what you want to do, and prevent bone damage. There are a, There is a wide spectrum of DMARDs available, and they go from very mild, very safe, very cheap, to work very, very well, have a few more risks, and can cost upwards of $20,000 a year. And we will use sometimes multiple at a time along that spectrum, but basically keep on working at finding the right combination for any given person until we get good control of disease. This is a list of a number of common uh, DMARDs. Uh, some of them you may have heard of, some of them not. Um, but they are generally all reasonable uh, options. The important thing to know about DMARDs is unfortunately they do not act quickly. They could take upwards of three to six months to reach their full effect. And like I said, often used in combination to gain an even uh, bigger effect. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the term of biologics. The biologics are a new, the newest class of DMARDs. They, been around on the market for around 10 years at this point. And essentially they all work um, in some way of an antibody or a system like that which binds very specific components of the immune system and by doing that it down regulates the inflammation which is causing the arthritis. The most common type and the oldest type of biologic is called a TNF antagonist and there are currently actually five on the market and there are now some non-TNF biologics available as well and they work through a number of different mechanisms then uh, by blocking what's called TNF. Like I said, the goals of treatment is remission and I think that's a very uh, doable goal for most but not necessarily all patients and, but at the beginning, that really is uh, where we should be trying to head. So that the only reason that we know someone has rheumatoid is that they need to be on medication to control it. So I'm going to leave it at, at there for now. I understand we'll have some time for questions uh, afterwards. In terms of other resources, like I was saying, there is a rheumatoid arthritis education program at the University of Alberta, which is available to any anyone uh, who does see uh, rheumatologists associated with the university, it's a th uh, four-day course run by occupational physiotherapists, an excellent opportunity uh, to learn more about RA. There are a number of arthritis society programs which you've heard about. Uh, they have an excellent website at www.arthritis.ca, and we have developed our website representing the rheumatologist at Edmonton called uh, edmontonrheumatology.com which has a number of resources, a discussion forum, uh, goes over all the medications uh, that one might consider for rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis itself and a number of other diseases. So hopefully that has been helpful for you. <music>